perfect for now, that's good. This suspension is a little firm actually. So this is my ride on the 2021 New Proof Mega 275 Comp V4. I wanted to see how a 165 mil travel enduro bike handles terrain like in huh. Blue Mountain. I was like in the I'm only taking it line. on the blue trails because it is not my bike and my friend likes to keep his bike pristine. If you see how I ride my stuff, especially at the bike park, I'm always crashing and breaking stuff on yeah, it. It's Just like sick. my first ride on the descent, I already broke the right lever. So I can't really like go full send, ride relatively conservative, only get air when I know for sure I can spot the landing and just don't blindly jump into random stuff. So that's the mindset and the effort that I am giving this bike as I am riding it here. It's definitely too stiff. Wanna let them out? Yeah. It's definitely too stiff for me. How's that feel? Like a couch? I gotta look. We're good. Overall, the bike feels choppy because the suspension isn't set up right. The back shock is actually pretty decent, but the front fork was really letting me down. I have ridden the Mega V4 at the local trails, and the Yari with the motion control damper felt great. I could barely notice the difference between that and my Lyric Ultimate with the Charger 2.1 damper, but on a blue on a trail like this where there's so much repeated hits I can really feel the limitations of this fork. The sag is where I would like it. The air pressure is actually less than what I normally set on my Lyric Ultimate. I normally run 100 to 110 psi in my fork with a 160 travel. On this 170 no travel Yari I was running 90 and it's still felt Damn, too so harsh after the mid stroke. I mean, off the top, it was pretty supple. I'm sure that if I had more time to set up the suspension and completely alter his setup, I could get the uh, bike to handle much better, but it's not my bike. So I have to kind of like deal with a compromise like this. But really, it's like the fork is what I've noticed the most that's letting me down on this bike. I also have to take a dig at the race face chest of pedals. Again, decent pedals for trail riding, but absolutely not designed or intended to be ridden at a DH park. They just don't have the wide enough platform. Constantly adjusting my feet. Phil, the owner of this bike, noticed that he had to constantly adjust his feet too. They just don't work in places like this. Hi. Ready? Does that feel better than your bike, suspension-wise, like for your hands? You know, it, it's difficult because like you'd have to ride the, ride the same bike on the on both trails because this is the roughest so far. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, is. it still feels rough. <laughs> it feels a little smoother than this one though. Right, right. Yeah, the, the whole place is definitely rough, but. Yeah, yep. Right. Let's go. Right Just missed that rock, baby! And there's a difference too in terms of how stable the bike is. The Mega felt like it weighed nothing. And it was getting bounced oh, off God. track quite a bit versus so sketchy, being on a burns. full downhill reg where it's more like a sled. I was actually talking to another worker. I was asking him, hey, do you think um, you have to use a DH bike to enjoy this park? And he says, yeah, you could do it on an enduro rig, but you're literally rattling the bike apart, oh, taking shit. years off its life. <laughs> and he also commented that the bike feels too light for this type of trail. And I agree with him. That's my assessment before I asked him too. Could it be done on the Mega? For sure. Like I said, I need to really spend the time to dial in the setup to ride this particular mountain then it should be relatively comfortable, but it still like sounds really, oh really God, rough on the bike. Battle. Feels really rough on the bike. I'm 
fall over that. Oh my god, it's off camber. I actually timed this section on the Mega versus the Descent downhill bike. And while the Mega had a really bad start and it was my first time running the top section of Wild Turkey, it is an 8 second difference in favor of the downhill bike. I almost fell in a drop-in point. Oh, really? That's why I was so far behind. <laughs> Man, that's some single track action right there. My favorite so far. <laughs> some dirt in there. <laughs> it's really narrow though. It is narrow. Oh, that between the tree, I went between the trees and I had like an inch of clearance. Yeah. Yup. I actually have a hard time check, reading the trail in front of me and ahead of me. I'm like, roots, 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 tree, tree. I was like, fuck, I can't keep. Rocks, 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 yeah. rocks, 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 had the Mega run before, so it was, it should have been faster, but it wasn't. That was actually surprising. Recovery! <laughs> I almost went old. I almost went old TB on that left switchback. I was like teetering between the endo and some other shit. I'm not gonna air that. No idea what's coming up. I also noticed in this short stint that the Mega likes to track the ground and you have to be really deliberate to get this thing to go up in the air. But once it goes up in the air, it actually goes decently high, like in the dual slalom area. I was actually clearing some of the doubles on the Mega where I was casing on the H bike. And I compared the dual slalom numbers between the Vetus Dominator, the Descent, and the Mega. And the Vetus came out on top at 23 seconds. The Descent is 24, tied with the Mega at 24. And this is actually where the merge is. It's not from the beginning of the trail. That's the only time I can get them all to line up at the same time. So this concludes my video of me riding a new proof Mega V4 in the northeast at the bike park. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next one. Bye.